There are two types of people in this world. People who don't like Dead Island and people who do. Like me. Dead Island is an action role playing open world game about killing zombies and a huge emphasis on melee combat. This sounds fun, like really fun, but the thing with this game is that well, there's a ton of glitches, the story isn't the best, there's like no character development until like halfway through the game, and the graphics, well, they just speak for themselves. But I still love this game. Other people may have very negative opinions about it, but me personally, I had a ton of fun playing Dead Island and Dead Island Riptide. And I did not have fun playing Dead Island 2. I will make a video about how much I genuinely hate that game with every fiber of my being. But are these games even still that good? And that's what I'll be talking about today. First, let's talk about the mechanics of the game. The mechanics are pretty simple. Walk, jump, sprint, attack, throw, aim, etc. But w one of my more favorite mechanics is the kick. This glorious, beautiful, super useful move is my absolute most favorite part of this game. Now why you may ask? It's a freaking kick, that's literally so awesome. Now what does it do? Well aside from kicking zombies, it actually also temporarily stuns them, leaving the window open for attack. And if you're in a sticky situation, just kick until they're... Well frankly I was gonna rhyme here, but I couldn't find the right word. Now, aside from that, there's also a pretty simple crafting system. Seeing how there's no carry weight, unlike another game, you can take anything and everything to your little heart's content. Now, what do you do with this stuff? Crafting, trading, selling, etc. Now, back to crafting. Around the map, there will be crafting benches around that will allow you to craft items and weapons. I remember once crafting the meanest sledgehammer ever. I think it had extra damage and higher chance of insta-kill. I don't know. Oh, and let's not forget about the cars. Which aren't good at all, but hey, at least they're better than whatever the hell Payday 2 was cooking up. Now that we have a majority of the mechanics looked at, let's take a quick look at the zombies. Dead Island has probably one of my more favorite zombie special types. First off, we have regular walkers, which shamble around and grapple you when you least expect it. And there's also Infected, who sprint at you at full speed like their Usain Bolt. And if my memory is correct from a WoW Such Gaming video I watched 7 months ago, then the Infected are recently turned people and walkers have been left to bake in the oven a little too long. Also, there's special zombies, which we'll talk about now. First off, there's the Thug, the big, squishy, and spongy and large zombie that can send you flying around the world. I mainly recommend just avoiding these guys because even that late game when you're plowing through zombies, these guys can still be a challenge and can still give the bitch slap of the century. Then there's the Soup Cider. I can't say the actual name of the guy or YouTube will be all up in me. This guy will slowly shamble to you and then pull a Jack in the Box zombie from PVZ and blow you up, which can insta kill you if you're not careful. Also, fun fact, Supsiders are the only zombie type in the game that will talk to you, asking for help from the uninfected and still having some self-awareness. Seeing this happen is actually kind of scary, because like, imagine being in that situation. Next up, we have the Ram. These guys will run at you like a, well, a Ram. These guys are completely immune to all damage in all places except their back, which have an open area they can hit to damage the Ram. I'd honestly say also avoid these guys as much as possible because, well, it ain't worth the risk to spend 5 minutes to kill this guy. Do you see these people right here? Yeah? Now imagine them as zombies. That's the floater. These guys will literally puke on you from afar with a corrosive slime that will take away a good chunk of your health. These guys are commonly found in water areas like the sewers and the jungles lakes. And speaking of the jungle, that's where we run into our next special infected, the Butcher. This special infected has arm blades made from their bones in their arms that they use to chop you up like your teriyaki chicken at Panda Express. Honestly, fighting these guys is actually kind of fun, but also terrifying. What's not fun though are the ones from Dead Island 2, which I'll go over in my future video about Dead Island 2. Now, I believe that's it for the zombies. Now, let's move on to the playable characters. 
Our first character we're introduced to is Logan Carter, an ex-NFL football player turned backpack wearing drunk guy with a tendency to throw stuff. Logan is a throwing expert, dealing the best damage when you throw stuff. Get it? Because you play football? And in football you throw stuff? Ah! Logan also has probably the coolest fury w with him throwing unlimited knives at enemies, which is actually so freaking awesome. Next up, we have Perna Jackson, ex-cop turned bodyguard and a tendency to shoot people who did nothing wrong. Perna is the guns expert, dealing higher damage with the guns, and for some reason one of her perks in her skill tree, she does more damage towards male enemies. She also has over 10,000 power on Rise of Kingdoms, which basically uh, creates an aura for her and her teammates, basically giving them boosts and bonuses to certain things. Next on our list is Xian Mei, I probably butchered that, undercover agent pretending to be a hotel worker but forced to work with those filthy Americans. Mei has specialties and bonuses for sharp weapons, even one perk where she has a chance to insta-kill a zombie, which is super awesome, super useful. Mei is also my personal favorite character to play as. Being able to easily dismember zombies with a chance of insta-kill makes this game a little more fun, unlike another game. Last but certainly not least, we have Sam motherfucking B. Everyone's favorite one-hit wonder rapper who looks like Kanye West. Sam B is our blunt weapon specialist and being mostly the tank of the group. When I played Dead Island on my own for the first time a few months back, I decided that he would be the one I'd play as for my playthrough. Only because I wanted to make a sick and OP sledgehammer, of course. Sam B was also the only character from any of the games to reappear in Dead Island 2. I'm going to have a whole section about why I don't like him in this game specifically. Now, there's also Ryder White, who we get to play in his DLC, but I surprisingly haven't played it yet, so I'll just skip him. If y'all actually want to see me play through that DLC, let me know in the comments. Alright, so now that I've covered about mostly everything, let's go on to one of the final things to cover. And that is the story. Yes, yes, I know, Dead Island doesn't have the best story, but we still gotta cover it. Alright, let's do it. So, we wake up in our room and have to escape the hotel due to it being overrun. We get saved by this guy, Cinemoy, who has a radio that some mysterious people will stock into us on. He says he'll help us escape and we just gotta get to him. So, we end up getting a hold of a more powerful radio at the lifeguard tower and the guy on the radio says we gotta go to the jungle and find somebody with a boat who will take us there. We end up also getting a hold of an armored van which gets pimped out by this mechanic. But he wants us to take his storage, uh, I mean daughter. We only use this van like once or twice due to using it to go to the city and find this church where we give the people there some help but then Jin, the mechanic's daughter, decides she wants to help everyone around there and that means the bad people at the police station who have been a pain in our ass for a few minutes and surprise surprise they do some bad things to her you to hang up that computer call come over here and kiss me on my hot mouth so we end up going to the jungle and find this guy Moen, who helps us get a hold of a boat and we get in contact with some scientists who ask us to do some stuff and we do it. Finding this native girl who's immune and we take it to the scientists and they make a cure. The place gets overrun and now we're on our merry way to the prison, where this guy on the radio from earlier said he was. The prison is just filler, but I'll still cover it. We find this guy who wants us to help his fellow prisoners, but the place gets overrun and Moen dies protecting Jin and Yerima. We then get in the elevator, get gassed out, and this guy decides he wants to help us. We find Ryder White on the rooftop of the helicopter and his infected wife in a carrier. Jin releases Ryder's wife and she bites him, resulting in Ryder killing both his wife and Jin. Ryder then injects a cure into him and he mutates in a fast bulky zombie. After we kill him, we escape the island on the helicopter and we overhear a radio chatter about some terrorist named Karen. I'll be honest, I skipped over a lot and potentially made a lot of plot holes myself skimming over this. But hey, that just means you could go play through the story yourself. Dead Island is fairly cheap and goes on sale pretty often on the Xbox store, which is where I got it and played it on my beautiful, glorious Xbox Series X. So, what are my thoughts on Dead Island? I love it. Yes, the game doesn't have the best graphics or stories or characters, but I can finally remember watching my brother play this when we were kids. Although I was scared out of my mind, I really enjoyed watching him play it. And then less than 10 years later, I finally got myself a copy of the game and played through it. And I loved it. 
I know a lot of people don't like this game, but personally, I'm a fan, like a huge fan. If y'all want me to make a video about Dead Island Riptide or the other spinoffs, dear God, please don't make me play those, or Dead Island 2, ugh, then like this video, comment, and subscribe to keep me in the algorithm. Now, goodbye, and I hope you have a great day or night wherever you are.